Hello and welcome back to the Academic Society. It's Toy in here and it is officially summer break for me. I finished teaching my classes, given exams, graded them, posted the grades, and now I am free to do whatever I like. And summer is like kind of like a magical time in the world of academia. If you don't have any classes or anything for the summer, we always have these like big dreams and goals like, oh my goodness, I don't have to worry about classes now. So I can really do all the productive things that I couldn't do in the semester. I can now try to do them all in the summer. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how to plan a productive summer. And I'm going to also share the number one thing that you should do this summer if you don't have any classes. So if you're interested in that, keep watching this video. So I'm Toyin, the founder of the Academic Society. I got my PhD in math and landed my dream job as a lecturer at a university. And I also create these videos about time management and productivity for grad students and academics. And I also share my academic lifestyle. So like I said, summer is a magical time. We have all these big dreams and big goals. So maybe if you're kind of early into your grad school experience, maybe you want to spend this summer preparing for qualifying exams or something like that. Uh, maybe you want to do some research this summer. Maybe you want to get some writing done, publish some papers. And it sounds like a perfect time to do all of these things. So I'm going to talk about the things we need to keep in mind when planning a productive summer because we like to be productive as academics even though it's summer. Okay, so the first thing and the most important thing on the list to plan for a productive summer is rest. You have to rest. You can't just go from semester to, and to summer and just work all the way through. You deserve a break. And I know a lot of people don't believe this, but rest is part of productivity. I always tell my students on the night before the exam, please don't stay up all night and study for this exam because you can't do math on a tired brain and you can't sustain this level of productivity on a tired brain or a tired body. I highly recommend taking some time, maybe a whole week, maybe three days, a whole weekend just to nourish yourself, nourish your body, spend time with your family, spend time with yourself, binge watch a TV show, go for a hike, go on a vacation, do something to take your mind off of your research, off of your work, and you will be able to come back and be so productive because you are going to be so much more refreshed. So if you don't have classes right now, I highly recommend taking a break and resting. All right, so the second thing, I recommend choosing maybe only two priorities to focus on on the summer because when we have a lot of different goals we, and we make like little progress on each of them, maybe that's not as fulfilling as completing a whole project or completing two projects that you're working on. So I think it's so important to prioritize and actually figure out what is most important and actually set some realistic goals around them. I talk about this with my focus members. So I have a program called Focus. It's a productivity and accountability program for grad students, but we have these monthly planning sessions and I start each one of them talking about promises and how it's so important to keep promises that we make to ourselves. Often we have these big goals and big dreams, like the big magical summer where we're gonna get everything done. And we set these huge goals for ourselves that aren't realistic. So what happens? We set these goals, we say we're gonna do some things, and then halfway through the summer we realize, oh, we haven't done these things. AKA, we have broken a promise that we've made to ourselves. And so when we continually set unrealistic goals and continually set make these promises to ourselves and continually break these promises that we make to ourselves, we start to mistrust ourselves and we start to, or distrust ourselves, not sure which one is correct. We stop trusting ourselves and we stop believing ourselves when we say that we're going to do something. So the next time you say you're going to do something, it makes it less likely that you'll actually do it because you have the evidence that you haven't actually done the things that you said you're going to do. So I recommend making promises to yourself that you can keep. So when you're creating these plans and setting these goals for the summer, think about, can I actually do this? Like how much time each week is it going to take for me to complete this goal? Because we want to create that good evidence. We want to make a promise to ourselves by setting a goal and actually achieve it. That way we build up more trust in ourselves so that when we do set more promises and make more goals, we actually believe that we're going to achieve them and we actually achieve them because we know we've done it before 
in the past. Okay, so what kind of goals and priorities do we want to set for the summer? I think it depends on what stage of grad school or academia that you are in. For example, if you're an incoming graduate student, you don't have any real work or assignments or research that you're working on, I highly recommend working on skills that will help you once you start in your first semester of grad school. So things like time management, things like getting on a good sleep schedule, things like researching your program and looking at the grad student manual, things like learning more about your new town. And if you need help with these things, I do have a course called Grad School Prep, and it is to help you prepare for your first semester of grad school, where I teach you how to learn about um, all the like, unknown secrets of grad school, like things that no one knows until you actually start grad school. I teach you how to um, transform your mindset from an undergraduate mindset to a grad school mindset. I teach you how to up level your productivity, like how do you actually get your work done once you're in grad school, and I teach you how to manage your time. So if you want step by step how to do those things, definitely check out my grad school prep course and you can do that through my free master class, how to know what to expect in your first semester of grad school, and you can go to the academic society dot com forward slash free to find that. So that is you if you're an incoming grad student. Maybe you are a current grad student and you have your qualifying exams or your comps coming up really soon and you want to spend the summer studying and preparing for those, right? That's a great goal to have. When I was preparing for my qualifying exams over the summer, I had to prepare for two classes at the same time. How did I do that? Well, I didn't try to prepare for them all at the same time. I spent, I think I had like six weeks. I spent the first two weeks on one class, the next two weeks on another class, and then I did like half days for each, like first half of the day, one class, second half of the day, the next class, and I was prepared, and I passed my qualifying exams on the first try, and oh, that was an amazing feeling. Also, maybe you want to get some writing done. How can you get some writing done? Well, you can set writing goals every single month. Or maybe say on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to do some writing. Set aside time where I wake up, get myself in the mood for writing, and actually get the writing done. All right, so how do you actually do this planning? We do this in my program Focus. By the way, this is probably a great time to join my program Focus because we have live monthly planning sessions every single month on the last Saturday of each month. So if you're watching this in real time, there's one coming up next weekend. We do them at Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, once a month last Saturday of the month. What do we do in these planning sessions? Well, we meet on Zoom Live and I, I, I help you walk through my whole project management framework where we do like a brain dump, figure out all the things that you think you want to do this summer, but then actually choose the priorities. So we have framework for doing all of that. Once we figure out what the priorities are in our planning session, we actually talk about how to turn them into SMART goals and we actually take the time to write them as SMART goals, aka the most important part of SMART goals is that they're time bound and actually saying on Mondays and Wednesdays from two to four I'm gonna do this thing or I'm gonna do this for two hours every single day or I'm gonna get this done by June 28th right so specific until so we work on those together in our planning sessions and then we also create um, like a breakdown of all of our tasks for the summer high level and then we break it down to the actual daily day-to-day -day tasks that we need to get them done in and then we create a daily schedule for ourselves so for the summer we're probably going to have a new daily schedule so we put that into place and we like to like share that with each other and like actually put in some fun time into our schedule as well so it's always a great time and then we actually implement our goals in focus as well because we have an accountability facebook group where we can go in and say I'm working today from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Anyone want to join me? And there will be students who are like, uh, yes, let's work together. And you can join the 24-7 co-working space inside of Focus to work and actually implement those goals. My neighbor seems to be vacuuming, so hopefully that's not too distracting. And if you haven't learned the power of co-working, let me tell you, I worked with this group a few summers ago and I wrote my whole book, Grab Boss, 
over the summer. It's not a very long book, but I wrote, wrote that whole thing and I was so proud of myself. And that's like just the power of the accountability of co-working. All right, finally to plan your productive summer, I highly recommend to reflect and reevaluate your goals at the end of each month. And you wanna be asking yourself questions like, do my goals still feel realistic? After this one month has passed, after I've attempted to do my plan, do my goals still feel realistic? Can I do more? Can I do less? Do I need to make new goals? Well, you can inside of Focus because we're going to have another monthly planning session just in time for you to reevaluate those goals. Also think, do, are you feeling unmotivated? Do you need to schedule in another break? Do you need to take some time off? Go into doing like a new hobby. I find like doing a hobby kind of and like actually spend a lot of time on it kind of makes me more refreshed and more excited to get back to my work. Also reflect and think what times of the day was I most productive? Like was I most productive in the summer in the morning this past month or was I an evening person? Did I need to go outside? Was it too hot? Do I need to go to a library? Like these are things that we can evaluate at the end of the month because the summer won't be over still. All right, so I hope that this video was helpful and I hope that I was able to emphasize that you should be resting this summer if you want to be productive this summer. Also, Focus is a great place that you can be productive with other grad students who are in the same mindset and they're super supportive. It's such a great community. So I'll put a link for that program at the in the description of this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, consider subscribing. I create new videos every Sunday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you next week. Have a wonderful day. Bye.